Ooh, that is a tough question. I have worked with Apis mellifera the longest, the European honeybee, but I have a ginormous fondness for bumblebees in general. They are the cute fuzzy flying bears of the insect world. I'm Kirsten Trainer. I started out as an English major and after graduating from college I was living on a farm and planted a wildflower garden for which I wanted to find some pollinators. And so I signed up for a beekeeping short course. This is an introductory beekeeping class, never intending to become a beekeeper. But I won my very first hive in a raffle. Not the bees, just the box. But as soon as I had the box, I knew I had to stock it with bees. And as any good beekeeper knows, you never want to start with just one hive. And so I started with three. Three turned into 20. And before I knew it, I had switched careers. For my PhD research, I focus on brood pheromones and how honeybees communicate via chemical signals um, to actually manipulate their caregivers into providing the appropriate food for their young. Uh, since then, I've worked on much more applied programs, and so I've been investigating how pesticides impact colony health and especially queen turnover. I've just recently started at Arizona State University where I'm looking to use this, the social complexity of a honeybee hive to understand information flows and how decisions are made. Bees are incredibly important. Most people know the charismatic honeybee, but that is only one of 20,000 species worldwide. They provide us with about every third bite we eat, bees and all the other pollinators such as butterflies, hummingbirds, bats, um, and managed pollinators like honeybees, bumblebees, and alfalfa leaf cutting bees provide us with about 80% of the crops we grow in the United States, and so they're very important for our food diversity. Everything from almonds to apples, even coffee and chocolate are improved through pollination. So honeybees are actually in no danger of going extinct. They are our managed livestock. They were imported to the United States from Europe. However, our other bees are disappearing. We're not quite sure why, but it's often referred to as the windshield effect. If you remember when driving as a child, often your windshield would get covered with splattered insects, and any time you stopped for gas, you would have to clean the windshield. This is no longer the case. In the last 30 years, we've lost about 75 to 85 percent of our insect biomass. This is a tragedy because they are the keystone and foundation of our food chain. So unfortunately, if we don't even know what's disappearing, it's very hard to care. Um, so the goal of this magazine is to raise awareness of the different pollinators and the unique roles they play in our ecosystem. And while it, doesn't, it can seem like an insurmountable problem, if we all make small changes in our backyards and our balconies, we can support a lot of pollinator diversity. Urban areas are particularly rich in bee diversity. And so even living in cityscapes, if we just change what we plant along the roads, uh, we can support a lot of the pollinators that help feed us. I'm a strong believer in scientific accuracy. A lot of times the media um, has very limited staff for creating articles about science. And so I also reach out directly to scientists and work with them to produce articles for the lay audience. Um, stories that will carry us along and help show us the unique world of pollinators and what they're doing in our ecosystems.